Hello, welcome to Hidden History, an odyssey through time. I'm your host, John Rodriguez, and this is the eighth episode of the podcast, Angel of the Airfield, the narrative of flight nurse Jane Kende. When we hear Hidden History first came upon Jane Kende's page on Wikipedia, we were naturally distraught. It's truly a shame when there is so very little information available about a woman who made United States history. Jane Kende was a flight nurse during World War II, and before this war, medical air evacuation was nothing more than a theory. By the end of World War II, medical air evacuation was recognized as vital to patient care. Naturally, the flight nurse emerged as the counterpart of the flight surgeon. Since the aircraft used for air evacuation also transported military supplies, they could not display the Red Cross. With no markings to indicate their non-combat status, these evacuation flights were vulnerable to enemy attacks. For this reason, flight nurses and medical technicians were volunteers. To prepare for any emergency, flight nurses learned crash procedures, received survival training, and studied the effects of high altitude on various types of patients. In addition, flight nurses had to be in top physical condition to care for patients during these rigorous flights. During the fight for Iwo Jima in March 1945 in Okinawa the following April, a 22-year-old ensign, Jane Louise Kende, became the first Navy flight nurse to arrive at those islands to care for the wounded. Our goal here at Hidden History was to fill in the blanks about Jane's life, to offer documentation not easily found elsewhere, and to correct any errors in the narrative of flight nurse Jane Kende. We can only hope that we have honored her memory. Jane's story, Hidden History That Has Remained Long Forgotten, is the story of an American woman who would go on to distinguish herself during the Second World War and a society learning to accept the new roles for women that manifested as a result of the war. Jane Louise Kende was born in Henrietta, Ohio on March 30, 1922 to Earl and Olive Kende. Jane was the third daughter born to the Kendays until four years later when son Alan was born. A common misconception found on the internet is that Jane was born in Oberlin, a town about 10 minutes away by car from Henrietta. The United States Census of 1920 places Earl and his family in Henrietta, as does the 1930 census. So is it possible that the Kende family moved from Henrietta to Oberlin for Jane's birth in 1922 and then back to Henrietta for the 1930 census? Sure, that's possible, but there's also the fact that an article was published in the Oberlin News Tribune on Thursday, March 15, 1945, that claims Jane Kende was mistakenly credited to Oberlin and that she was, quote, strictly a Henrietta girl. The news article in its entirety is now available on our website. So although the internet says that Jane was born in Oberlin, we here at Hidden History will stick with the evidence available. Nonetheless, Jane was a farm girl who grew up in Henrietta and later attended Henrietta High School, where she was an honor student and later valedictorian, graduating in 1940. Jane went on to study nursing at St. Luke's Hospital in Cleveland, where she graduated in June of 1943. Shortly after her graduation from St. Luke's, Jane joined the U.S. Naval Nurse Corps and commissioned an ensign she received her training at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station in Illinois. Jane was then sent to the Naval Hospital at Treasure Island before being assigned to the NATS, or Naval Air Transport Service. NATS was a branch of the United States Navy from 1941 to 1948. At its height during World War II, NATS totaled four wings of 18 squadrons that operated 540 aircraft with 26,000 personnel assigned. Owing to the need for flight nurses in the Pacific War, the Navy established its own School of Air Evacuation Casualties at the Naval Air Station in Almeida, California on December 10, 1944. 
Jane became a member of the first class of the Naval School of Air Evacuation. The nurses in this program were part of a new air evacuation service in the Pacific, and the eight-week course consisted of lectures and demonstrations on survival training, air evacuation techniques, physiology of flight, first aid with emphasis on shock, splinting, redressing wounds, and treatment of patients in non-pressurized cabins. Students also learned about artificial horizons and altitude through flight simulation exercises. The first class of 24 nurses and 24 pharmacist mates graduated January 22, 1945. Because these evacuation flights were vulnerable to enemy attacks, flight nurses and medical technicians were volunteers who were selected to be trained. After graduation, Kende was assigned to the newly formed VRE-1, Evacuation Transport Squadron, which was comprised of the 24 flight nurses, 24 pharmacist mates, a flight surgeon, and 22 twin-engine R-4D Douglas Skytrains, the Navy version of the venerated Army C-47 or civilian DC-3. Kende and VRE-1 arrived in Guam in early February 1945, putting in place an evacuation system that would transport combat casualties directly from the battlefield to forward hospitals in Guam, then on to Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, ultimately arriving in the continental United States, where every effort was made to place the wounded in hospitals as close to home as possible. At first, there was speculation as to whether or not nurses would be allowed to fly onto the actual battlefields, a concern that increased with the invasion of Iwo Jima on February 19, 1945. Ultimately, the military decided to allow flight nurses into combat areas, and preparations were made to document and record the event. Navy Lieutenant Gil DeWitt was assigned to accompany the mission and would go on to photograph the first Navy nurse in action. On March 3, 1945, Lieutenant DeWitt reported to a Ghana airfield on Guam with orders to accompany a Lieutenant Ann Purvis, only to discover upon arrival that the plane had already departed. Disappointed, he boarded the second Douglas R-4D traveling to Iwo Jima. After a 700-mile, 15-hour journey that began at the Ghana airfield on Guam, the Douglas R-4D hospital transport that Gil DeWitt was on broke through the clouds of volcanic dust and smoke to land on Iwo Jima on March 6, 1945. However, an offshore bombardment was in progress and the plane was ordered to circle the airfield for 90 minutes. As the plane circled the small island, the passengers on board could see the bursting of shells beneath them like fireworks on a 4th of July. The front line was easily distinguished by the trail of smoke and dust across the north end of the island. Along with passengers, this naval air transport was carrying blood and medical supplies for the wounded. Also on board this flight was 22-year-old Navy nurse Jane Kende. While under mortar fire, the plane landed at a southern airfield and Kende and the crew were sheltered in foxholes while carrier planes finished an attack on enemy positions north of the field. Once it was safe, Kende made her way to the wounded soldiers lying in stretchers on the airfield. In this moment, she would become the first naval flight nurse on a Pacific battlefield. There were 16 critically wounded waiting, and the flight surgeon gave Kende the rundown on each patient, indicating what treatment they would need. Quote, We took the worst. Others would be evacuated on hospital ships, Kende would later recall of that time. Jane would later remark about her experiences at Iwo Jima, quote, I don't remember being frightened while we were on the ground. There wasn't time to think about anything except getting these wounded men on board. Once she left the island, however, she found her knees were shaking so much that she could hardly stand. Between the 6th of March and the 21st, Kende and her fellow flight nurses flew in and out of Iwo Jima, evacuating nearly 2,400 Marines and sailors to relative safety. With three days off between missions, Jane would later recall, quote, 
The thing we always worried about were the Japanese snipers. We were afraid of the gas tank getting hit. The Battle of Okinawa, codenamed Operation Iceberg, was a major battle of the Pacific War fought on the island of Okinawa by United States Army and Marine Corps forces against the Imperial Japanese Army. The initial invasion of Okinawa on April 1, 1945 was the largest amphibious assault in the Pacific theater of World War II. Six days after this invasion, on April 7, 1945, Kende, who had celebrated her 23rd birthday just a few days before, landed on Okinawa. Barbara Miller Finch, the first female naval correspondent to visit Iwo Jima, was aboard Kende's flight to and from Okinawa. Finch watched as Jane took, quote, efficient charge of 20 wounded men chosen for the first flight back to the Guam hospital. In Finch's own words, which can be found in an article now available on our website, as the stretchers laid on the dirt airfield, waiting to be lifted into the plane, Jane quietly acquainted herself with the needs of each case. She was marvelous at multitasking. She chatted with the men while she monitored their vitals, administered sedatives, and changed bandages. A Marine with a compound fracture in his left arm and a bullet wound through his neck was the flight's most serious case. Kende fed him through a tube on the flight to Guam. She even inspected a dud artillery shell that a Marine fought doctors to allow him to carry on board the plane as a reminder that he was, quote, living on borrowed time because it did not explode after landing near him on the battlefield. When she was later asked how men reacted to seeing a woman on the battlefield on Okinawa, Jane remarked, quote, the same as anywhere, they all whistle. While today's military men are accustomed to seeing women in uniforms and fatigues, it was still a new experience in World War II, and the women were very aware of their appearance. Actually, the women were encouraged to maintain an attractive appearance, even when wearing fatigues in the jungles of the South Pacific. Not only did it cheer up the men, but it helped dismiss the negative stereotypes and aid it in recruitment. One flight chief nurse was quoted as saying, I expect my nurses to be as if they just came out of Elizabeth Arden's salon, with her hairdo, with her makeup, with her uniform absolutely immaculate. As beautiful and as presentable as she who has trained in flight nursing school should be. Despite what may be found on the internet about Jane Kende, she did not return to the United States after Iwo Jima. Instead, after completing her work on Okinawa, Kende was ordered to return to the United States to participate in a war bond tour. With an injured Marine by her side, Jane's tour lasted a month and saw her speaking at shipyards and businesses. Soon after, however, she returned to the Pacific where she was assigned the Guam to Honolulu leg of the evacuation route. Around this time, Jane began dating an air evacuation pilot named Lieutenant Robert Sheverton of the U.S. Navy. On February 14, 1946, Jane married Lieutenant Sheverton, which ultimately meant the end of Jane's military career, since married women were not allowed to serve. By 1955, Robert was still serving in the Navy in the Pacific area, and Jane and their three daughters, Karen, Diane, and Debbie were living in San Diego. Jane continued to pursue her nursing career after leaving the Navy, a career that had been a childhood dream, and she was well thought of in the San Diego medical community. She continued to work as an RN until her retirement in 1985. On July 19, 1987, Jane Kende Sheverton died from cancer in San Diego, California. We felt it was only right to end this episode with a quote by Jane in regard to her military service, 
A quote we felt sums up who Jane Kende really was as a person. Quote, Our rewards are wan smiles, a slow nod of appreciation, a gesture, a word, accolades greater, more heartwarming than any medal. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Each episode of Hidden History will explore a story that has been hidden in the pages of history and needs to be told. Pictures, newspaper clippings, and links to external articles relating to a particular episode will be available on our website. Thanks again for listening. I'm John Rodriguez, and this has been Hidden History, an odyssey through time. Thank you.